I always, I would, I would be thinking about you right now. David, so talk to us. Like, what made you like? Obviously, you're an, a, a very accredited photographer with these awards, and there's plenty of other things that I probably haven't even listed. Like, tell me, like, what made you get into photography in the first place? Like, oh, what, boy. what made you get into this field? That's a long story, man. Because I'm an old person, so you got to go way back. Um, <laughs> I mean, so photojournalism kind of came by accident. Um, it really started as, as um, just wanting to take pictures, frankly. So I, I, I found a picture of me that my mother took. Um, I was probably three years old and I had a camera in my hand. So I've had cameras in my hands for a very, very long time. I remember as a very young person, six or eight years old, finding um, a, a, what I considered a real camera that was my mother's. So my mother and father had uh, a lot of influence on me because they dabbled in photography as well. And they had a lot of their gear and darkroom stuff um, in closets. And I found those things and started messing with them when I was a kid. And I was, I was just out in the neighborhood taking pictures of my friends and of just things um, and wildlife too, birds. You know, I have a, a strong connection with uh, wildlife and birds. Um, we might talk about that a little bit. We will. But um, it just started when I was young. And then I think it was in high school. Uh, and this is true for a lot of people. This is a fairly common story that um, in high school, the outlets for photography are pretty slim, but one of the big ones was the high school newspaper and yearbook. So I grew up in Lexington, um, taking pictures around my neighborhood in Lexington, but we moved to Berea when I was in high school age, my family did. And so I went to high school in Berea, the Berea Community School, and uh, thankfully they had uh, a newspaper with a great advisor and they had a yearbook with also a great advisor. So that gave me my outlet to continue to take pictures and kind of have a purpose with my pictures. Having things to take pictures of gave me a little, a little, bit, a little bit of authority to have that press badge on and gave me access to things. You know, and I'm the kind of person and, and um, you, a lot of photographers, a lot of photojournalists and documentary style photographers um, consider themselves to be observers. And that was the kind of person I was as a young kid. I was fairly shy and I, I like to watch things as they happen, but I didn't necessarily want to participate in things. And that's what the camera I found. Um, and I didn't really think about this until much later in life, but I think that that's what was going on is that the, in high school, the camera allowed me to participate in things, but not necessarily be active participant in those things. I could go to them, I could hang out um, and be there with everybody, but I didn't have to be front and center. So I, I think I'm in my nature is to be a quiet observer. Uh, and so the photography and photojournalism really worked well with that personality. Uh, and then I started working in high school also with the local newspaper. And so they uh, allowed me to shoot assignments for them and I started making a little bit of money and then I discovered um, that when I started thinking about college and trying to decide where to go, uh, I discovered that Western Kentucky University, just across the state, has a fantastic journalism program. In fact, my yearbook advisor at, at my high school was a graduate of that program, and she turned me on to that program. And then so I, I inquired at Western and was thinking about it. And then Western actually started, one of the professors there started recruiting me, to, uh, two professors there started recruiting me as a photojournalism student. And uh, they told me later that they'd never done that before. Uh, never actually had that or felt like they wanted to actively recruit anybody. So I thought that was fairly flattering. I didn't, I'm glad they didn't tell me that at the time, uh, but they told me that much later. Um, but I really didn't know much about journalism all I, th all I knew was that the, the journalism was a, was a mechanism for me to take pictures. That's all I really wanted was to take pictures. And then I found like, oh, I can make a little money taking pictures. Mm -hmm. Oh, you give me 25 bucks for like that whole week where I shot a bunch of pictures for you. That's cool. Okay. I'll so do you, that again. So you was taking pictures in high school for a newspaper and you wasn't getting paid at all? Not at, well, not at the high school level, but when I started working for the local paper, yeah, they mm -hmm. started paying me. And then I was like, oh, this is real. Like, yeah, 
I didn't know I could make money at that. I didn't know this was, this could be a career. You mean like I was just taking pictures because I just love taking pictures. And now I'm like, Oh, you're talking about a career. And it's really interesting to me to think about photographers who like to take pictures and then photojournalists, because I think they're two different things. Mm, Photojournal- photojournalists are, are taking pictures f- uh, for a purpose, really photographers. And, and I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of photojournalists out there. I know that, stumbled into newspaper jobs because they just like to take pictures and they weren't really truly storytellers. They just were happy to be making a living, taking pictures. And I was too. And I kind of had to develop into the storyteller part through college and through my internships and early on in my career. Because at first, yeah, this was just a way for me to figure out how to like take something I loved, a passion and be able to make a living out of it. I thought about going to school, Roche- I, I, I applied for school at the Rochester Institute of Technology. They had a photo program. I applied and uh, visited uh, Pratt, Art St- Pratt Art Institute in New York because they had a photo program. Um, I actually went and, and almost, no, I did apply. I did, I, I can't remember. I guess I looked, I don't think I actually applied, but I, I almost went to college for ornithology, speaking of birds. Uh, so that was how close my career trajectory could have changed is, uh, that I had a, a love of birds and took ornithology classes in high school at the college level. And, uh, I gave it some serious thought and Cornell was kind of the place to do that. Um, I don't think I applied for it though, but I, boy, I almost did. Um, You'd have been down with Andy Bernard. Yeah. Who, I mean, who knows where <laughs> I'd be right now? Um, so, so, you know, the, the journalism part, I think I just kind of lucked into it the storytelling part, uh, frankly, and that came through, um, through my classes and my professors at Western and my internships. Well, so what was like the first, what was like the first one when you realized that you made, you were starting to make a transition from a photographer to a photojournalist that you started to realize like, man, I'm liking not only just the photo itself, but the storytelling aspect of it. Like what, what was that moment that made you click and like start to transition into a photojournalist? That's a great question. That's a very hard question. I think it happened slowly, frankly. I don't Mm -hmm. think there was one moment. I think it started in college, but even in college, I was just, I was just fired up to be taking pictures, to be taking news pictures. I was very, well, some people probably say I'm still very competitive. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I want to take the best pictures. I want to be the best photojournalist that I can be. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. And, and in college, it's very competitive because you're competing against your classmates for grades. You're competing against your classmates for internships mm-hmm. and then jobs in the end, because you got to, you know, then there's all the college uh, awards that you can be doing. And so I was so focused on my classes and the assignments and trying to figure out how to get those best pictures. that I think I wasn't completely, totally focused on storytelling so much. I mean, they were teaching that to us, and I was executing it, but I think I was just doing it because that's what I felt like I had to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, it was good fun and all. Um, but I think that that evolution really happened over a longer period of time when I realized that I had much more power and much more um, influence, I guess, when I took better storytelling photos as opposed to just going out and um, just executing that job and coming back um, and finishing it up and leaving for the day. Yeah. So would you say you like being a photographer better or a photojournalist better? A uh, photojournalist, um, much, much better for, for the reason that I, that I said that, that, that you, when a photojournalist does their job well, they can have much more influence mm-hmm. on people and, and evoke reactions from people um, and inform people and entertain people even. We do a lot of things. We're very, very diverse uh, kind of people. What I love the most about photojournalism, as opposed to just being, but you can make a living in photography in a lot of different ways, a lot of different ways. Wedding photographer, portrait photographer, uh, commercial photographer, I mean, you name it. Birth photographer. Yeah. Funeral photographer. Oh yeah. (laughs) Like we talked about. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, a lot of ways that you can make a living with cameras um and some of them pay very very well frankly the commercial photographers pay great great money fashion photographers make great money if you can get Mm -hmm. in there but to me the photojournalism part was um much more about humanity and it allowed me 
you know, the, re the reward to me was I never had an office job, never as a photojournalist, because you didn't, you could not do your job from an office. You had to be out in the field. So every day I would come in in the morning and I would get my two or three assignments and they would be who knows where in the city or in the state. And when I was with the Herald leader, we covered an awful lot of things in the state, which was my favorite things to do. And I would just be out exploring. And of course, the people and things that I was photographing were interesting or we wouldn't be doing stories about them. So I got to meet fantastic people in some interesting places. The things that I got to do as a photojournalist were amazing. Yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been on the top of the Capitol Rotunda on the outside. Who's got, who gets to do that? I've met, um, I've ridden in a helicopter with a Dalai Lama. I've had a portrait session, one-on-one -on -one portrait session with Harrison Ford. I had breakfast with John Cleese. I've one-on-one uh, -on -one stuff. I mean, Ridden in an so, elevator with Gene Simmons.